Good morning, my fellow scientists. I want to talk about a question I got in the comments. Why don't we make batteries out of the same kinds of chemistry that we use for explosives? That's a really interesting question. And I think I have an answer. First, let's talk about energy density. Surprisingly, explosives don't have an extremely large energy density. That is to say, the amount of energy per unit gram per, per mass is, is not particularly good for explosives. So I looked up the energy density of TNT, just as one possible example explosive, and the energy density is something like two megajoules per kilogram. That's a similar range to a lithium ion battery. Uh, so it's, it's just, it's not a lot more energy dense. And let's compare that to something like gasoline. And if you look at this plot of energy density and specific energy, there's just a huge difference. So TNT would be in the bottom left-hand corner there at like two and two. Uh, and gasoline, natural gas, all these are way out in the middle of the chart because they have such amazingly high energy. So why? Why is it that these are just orders of magnitude better? And the answer is that because they don't have to carry their oxidizer. So batteries and explosives have something in common. Explosives have their fuel, the carbon and nitrogen, embedded in the same molecule as the oxidizer, the oxygen. As a consequence, they can decompose really, really fast. All they have to do is rearrange their molecular structure, oxygen binding to carbon, nitrogen binding to nitrogen, and you get a lot of product molecules, a lot of gas product molecules. So they can become a gas extremely quickly, hence explosives. Batteries have something in common. They have their fuel, say zinc, and their oxidizer, copper two, all in the same device. So zinc gets oxidized, like it's rusting, and copper gets reduced, it's being plated out. That is a spontaneous reaction that gives energy, but it's all in one convenient package. The fuel and the oxidizer are all right there. Also why we've seen these uh, batteries exploding, right? Because if you have a lithium ion battery, it's got high energy compounds and their oxidizers all in the same little packet ready to react. That's why they give you such convenient power immediately. It's why they don't need to breathe air to work. It's also why if you drive a nail through them, they can explode. Why is natural gas, gasoline, fossil fuels, why are these so far out on the energy density chart? And the answer is you don't need air for an explosive. You don't need air for a battery, but you do need air for the combustion of natural gas or gasoline. So they have this huge advantage. So whether we're talking about batteries or explosives, you have something that doesn't need oxygen. This is trinitrotoluene or TNT. It rearranges to form carbon dioxide, nitrogen, maybe some carbon monoxide. It doesn't have to have oxygen to burn. Compare that to natural gas. So if you look at the equation balanced for the combustion of natural gas, you've got CH4 plus O2 goes to carbon dioxide and water. The mass ratio is 16 atomic mass units to 64, or a 1 to 4 ratio. That means only 20% of the fuel, the stuff that's actually being burned, is being carried in the fuel tank. So bottom line, combustion reactions are going to have a serious advantage over batteries and explosives. And if you tried to make chemistry from an explosive into a battery, you'd have a trouble with separating your oxidizer reducer. So I don't know that that's gonna give you a strong advantage, but you could try to do a combustion reaction with all the advantages that entails within the context of an electrochemical cell, which is called a fuel cell. And certainly those are a remarkable technology that's being explored uh, in many different contexts. Anyway, if you like that kind of thing, discussing chemistry and ideas for energy capture and storage. Tune in the next time we update Monday through Friday. We talk about chemistry and batteries and how to characterize them here in the Allen Lab.